Are they do are they um continue to do some of these art projects? Well instead of posting them at the mall like they usually do, they did this virtual presentation. So you can click through all the different types of art, different buildings, the kids' okay. names are on, the students' names are on. And then there's a write-up on, you know, kind of the background or what the picture means. And, um, and then the pictures, so. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to look at it. got to have 7 o'clock, and I think we got, we have everybody but... Okay, am I unmuted? Yep, you're unmuted. Mm -hmm. Yep, we can hear you, Scott. Wonderful. We need, we need Sorry about yeah. the technical difficulty, I apologize. We need bread, For some maybe. reason, the link I had wasn't working. Yeah, I had to click mine twice. Mine at first redirected somewhere, and then I clicked it again, and it worked. So I don't know what, what that was about. All right, 701, where do we stand? We got everybody on board? Everyone I don't but see Brad. Brad, and I don't see Phil. Yes, Phil's here. Yeah, here's here. Phil. Next page, Pam. Oh, all right. So we will start and Do we uh, want to wait a minute, or should we get rolling with six? We could start, and we'll have someone call Brad and see if he's having tr trouble. You just emailed me, so. I think we should get rolling. I, I think so, too. Mike, you good with starting? Yes. You're muted, Mike. I can't hear you, Mike. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to assume Mike's, Mike's good to go. Uh, we'll call it to order. Uh, welcome everybody to the May 18th, 2020 regularly scheduled electronic Board of Education meeting. Um, we are going to start by standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, so please join. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, States of America. 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 and to the Republic for which it stands, nation, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that, everyone. Uh, Bill, if you could take roll, please. Yeah. President McFarland. Here. Vice President Singer. Here. Secretary Rausch is here. Treasurer Fidel. Here. Member Baker. Here. Member Blazy. And Member Lauterbach. Here. There's okay. Six. We have a quorum. Uh, we'll move right to item uh, three, our consent agenda. We have on there item 3.1, approval from the minutes from the April 20th, 2020 budget workshop and regular meeting. Uh, item 3.2 is the Northeast Middle School teacher, Terry Cole has announced resignation, effective June 12th, 2020. 3.3 uh, is payment of the school bills in the amount of $6,818,576. And 3.4 are some legal bills uh, from Troon and Lusk Albertson. Uh, those can be easily identified in the agenda. Um, take a motion. I move to approve item 3.1 through 3.4 on the consent agenda. Support. Moved by uh, motion Pam, support by Mary. Any discussion? on the items in the consent agenda. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Say aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you, Pam. Uh, next up, we're in item 4.1. We have presentations to the board. This is uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion update by Dr. Beasley. The floor is yours. Do we have Dr. Beasley? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. She's muted. Amy, you still appear to be muted. Better? You've Better. got it. There you go. It's showing that uh, participant screen sharing is disabled for me. Oh, is we that got the you. case, Cindy? You're live here, Amy, but you want to you want to be able to share your PowerPoint, right? We're working right now on that. Sorry about that. All good. We're rolling with it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the Can you share now? Dave early. thinks he's got you nice set up, Amy. Those over.
Any luck yet, Amy? Amy Dave yes, thinks he's got you set up. Can you share your screen? <gasps> Magic. You did it. All right. Thank you. Now let me make sure y'all can see it. All we good? Can, we can yes. see it. Yep. Okay, yes. I'll make it. I'll make it big. And we'll do presentation mode. How about that? All right. So thank you to board and superintendent for the opportunity to update y'all on both the 2020 diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy and on the work already in progress against the strategy. So I think we all know each other, but I am Dr. Amy Beasley, I have a doctoral background in science and data, and I have expertise in diversity, equity, and inclusion work. And I am the proud parent of two Midland Public Schools graduates as of 2019. So the timing of this discussion feels important. Um, we knew back in December, as we were planning to partner on this work together, that it was critical that we um, define and accelerate our efforts in DEI. And we knew then that it was critical to our success as a district. And I would say that's true now more than ever. Um, so in the next few minutes, I wanna walk us through three key points in this discussion. I wanna talk about why an inclusive culture where we value diversity and ensure equity will differentiate us as a district. And I wanna talk about our strategy for integrating diversity, equity, and inclusion to deliver meaningful and visible outcomes and um, give you all just a few highlights of work that's already in progress. And then I wanna talk about how we can partner together to drive action. So if we think about what DEI as a differentiator means, here's, here's how I define that. The very best educational experiences and systems deliver excellent, rigorous academics, and they do it in the context of an outstanding culture. So they report that their students are more agile, they're more collaborative, they experience all dimensions of diversity, they are courageous, they're resilient, um, they feel included, and all students can achieve success. And people wanna be part of a culture like that. They want a student experience like that, and families want a place, they're seeking a place where their student, their student can thrive and where they can belong to community. And here's what the data says. I'm gonna just adjust my screen a little bit. There we go. Um, in schools with an inclusive culture where diversity is embraced, we see huge benefits to our students. We see increase in their cognitive skills and their ability to think critically improves. We see um, that students who are bringing their whole selves to the classroom, they're able to fully engage with what they're learning. And therefore they come away with a better understanding of what they're learning. And they build the ability to question their own assumptions, to ask better questions and to get a broader perspective and to value getting a broader perspective, which is what's at the heart of real learning. And we see that they are more likely to be connected to their community and they're more li likely to value service and they know what it means to work collaboratively for the best result. And all of these skills and experiences set them up, prepare them to thrive once they graduate, and we are priming them for a greater success. And we see that even in data that looks from all different branches of science, it shows um, again and again that socially diverse groups where there are multiple dimensions of diversity are more innovative than homogeneous groups. And we have a bajillion more data points that support the five key things that we just discussed. That, that inclusive culture where diversity is valued and we ensure equity is the ideal um, and outstanding culture in which to achieve a great education. So we're not treating DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, as a campaign. We're not treating it as just a program because we know that doesn't deliver the outcomes that we need and it's not sustainable. It has to be ingrained in the DNA of our school community. And so instead of the DEI vision, we need a district vision. 
And this is a recommendation. It'd be a great future discussion for the board. But we think about it this way, thinking first about who we are. Our teachers, administrators, our board, and our students are leaders who model respect, trust, and courage, which science will tell you are the foundations of an inclusive culture. And they model that with each other daily, how we work and grow together. So we ensure a culture where there is equal opportunity to learn and achieve, where we collaborate for the best success and where everyone can experience value and belonging. And it's the outcomes that we aspire to so that all of us, our leadership, our students, everyone is enabled to achieve success. We have a strong foundation to build on. And actually there's already been some excellent work happening all across the district that is, is bringing a vision like this to life. So since this is not a program or a campaign, it's really part of the foundation, part of the DNA. You have to think about five areas where we can work together to cultivate a vision like that. And that will help us ensure that the great work we're doing now will be sustainable into the future. So the first one is governance. Um, There's one area where the board, y'all are already engaged and we can ensure that our policies are equitable and that they are inclusive. Um, we can support our administration in providing guidelines and practices that align to that. One thing that we can do is to call out the places where our policies already drive equity and inclusion, and we can evaluate opportunities to build more of those elements in. Next, we have leadership, and I've defined leadership as administrators, teachers, and support staff, um, because we, they all are leaders in our district. They are the ones who are actually the stewards of our culture. And then our customers, as Mike would say, our customers are our students and our families. And our families are invested at NPS. They know we're committed to academic excellence and that um, learning in a, an inclusive and an equitable environment um, gives their students the best outcome. And so we want to equip them to be partners with us in creating and supporting inclusive culture. Um, our community represents opportunities for collaboration. So we already work closely with all kinds of nonprofit partners, with community members, employers, and this is a space where we can share best practices and empower our whole community to support the work that we do here at NPS because we are, we're the town square for Midland. We are the cross section of our community where everyone comes together. And then finally, reputation. So we want to establish that DEI is a priority for us, that we are committing to advancing a more inclusive and diverse culture. And we want to benchmark with other leaders in this space to learn and share with the best. Um, so I want to take a minute to just highlight some work that's already happening in each of these focus areas and tell you a little bit about one, what some of those driving goals are for us. So under governance, we talked about institutionalizing equity and inclusion in all of our policies, guidelines, and practices. So again, really ensuring that everything is filtered through the lens of inclusive and equitable. And some places where we can focus initially would be student experience, would be HR, and in curriculum. Those are some natural areas to start. And then just to ensure board stewardship of those, um, of that, that equitable, inclusive culture because we know that that will produce greater academic success. And we want to attract and we want to retain students. And we know that we can attract them. What keeps them here is the academic experience and the outstanding culture. A couple of things I wanna highlight that are already either achieved or in progress. We've delivered an active ally report and response system in response to student parent feedback. Um, so we launched that right before the stay home order and had already received some great feedback on that. And then we have embedded equity and inclusion in partnership with HR um, in the recruiting guidelines around some events that we would normally be holding this time of year. And it was a great exercise in exploring how that might look, different touch points that we could use in order to really embed um, inclusion and equity in that. If we look at leadership, so 
So this is actually a space where I've been spending a lot of time. Um, now that we are in the stay home, our leadership is incredibly important and they are delivering for us in um, unprecedented ways. And so it's been a great time for me to spend time interfacing with them to help build their leadership skills, help them develop and um, prepare for all of the change that's coming our way. So a couple of things to highlight here under leadership, um, increasing access to opportunities for all employees and equipping our leaders to demonstrate inclusive behavior. So that's a, an area, again, in response to feedback back that we've received across the district is um, establishing a common language and a common set of behaviors that we all that we all know and have mastered. Um, elevating resource groups and professional learning communities. These are places where we can positively impact our employee experience. And the data has shown that these really help to retain our best employees when people are engaged and have built community in these ways. I say, developing our data and our insights to inform decision making. This is something that we already do and we want to um, just enhance this area so that we can use our data to support the decisions that we make. And then ensuring that dimensions of diversity are recruited, that we embrace that and that we want to retain our great employees. So a couple of highlights here, um, the inclusive leadership coaching program has been a highlight for me personally in working with cohorts of our principals and our assistant principals. Um, and we have several cohorts to come. This has been an area where inclusive leadership is great leadership and um, have enjoyed watching them learn to collaborate and um, build relationships across the district to innovate together and achieve success. We've designed some DEI learning opportunities already for our teachers and administrators. And as you've seen, we've been working on our vision statement. Our customers, and I'll never, <laughs> I'll never be able to think about us as just students and families. Again, I love the idea of customers that we serve. Um, but we serve our students and families and we, we engage them and they must be part of the work in order to build this community and we must equip them to have the same common language and common behaviors and common understanding that their kids are learning in school. And so um, we want to be sure that for them, equity and inclusion is just part of their experience. A couple of ways that we have, have been working to achieve that already the um, parent, student, and community advisory team has been activated and has provided some great insight and perspective to the work that we are doing. They are excellent ambassadors for MPS. We've developed a DEI student resource group and um, have recently just launched a team of our PTOs and backpack buddies, uh, leaders throughout the district in order to collaborate to share best practices and resources especially right now when we really need that the most. And that's been, that's been great to see them lead in that way. And in our community, um, we wanna be able to equip our partners in the community, nonprofit, employers, community members, to understand what we're doing here at MPS, to understand that our work um, differentiates us and allow them to be ambassadors for us. And then we also want to ensure that the best practices we're using within MPS extend to the relationships and partnerships we have with community members. One way that we've already done that is to develop a workshop in conjunction with um, MACF that we, we will launch as soon as we are able um, to again help to um, bring our nonprofits along in the same journey that we are on so that we all have that common language. Um, we also have created some key messaging for our business case. So the, the benefits of why an inclusive culture where we value diversity and where we ensure equity so that we can share that with our community partners and employers. I think we all believe it's the smart thing to do and it's the right thing to do. And then our reputation. Um, we want to establish that we're leaders in advancing the culture. This is not at all to say that we have arrived because we know that we have a lot of work left to do, but we want to establish that this is a priority and a commitment for us. And then we want to benchmark our progress. There are some um, others who are doing excellent work and we want to learn and share with them. And so 
we're already in the process of beginning to evaluate some of the collaborations and partnerships that we have currently and find ways for us to work together to learn and share. And then working on authoring some articles on best practices so that we can again collaborate with the best and learn from them. I'll just pause right there. I know that was a lot. So there's been a lot going on and now our next steps. How can we partner together? This is the last piece. Um, because we're handling a lot right now. Lots of variables, lots of challenges. And that is, for me, precisely why now is the time to double down. Because we know that culture that's solid, um, that values ideas, that values innovation, that collaborates well, that trusts, um, that seeks out new ways of thinking, that can solve big challenges together. That's what we must we must prioritize and accelerate. And to do that, we have to be focused and we have to be committed. And so we come together. We all have an important role. Board and superintendent, y'all get us on the same page. You share the strategy. You share a compelling vision um, with not just our school community, but the broader community. And then we equip our students and our families to partner with us in creating and supporting an inclusive culture. And we ensure that they understand the value of integrating DEI into the fabric of our community beyond a program, beyond a, a campaign, so they can fully engage with us in the work. They are crucial for the work to come. And we work together. So our board, our superintendent, and our administrative leadership drive actions that move the needle put structure in place to accelerate progress and to communicate commitment. They ensure that the outcomes can be seen, can be felt, and can be measured. And the superintendent will empower leaders throughout the district, so our teachers, our principals, our staff, um, to own and drive components of the plan. Because, I mean, both, both parts are crucial, right? There is the direct engagement, the visible leadership from y'all, and then the ability for our leaders to be part of the change so that it is infused in each of our buildings and our classrooms um, and that it's authentic and that it's sustainable. And then um, we achieve, in my science life, we had a saying, what gets measured gets done. So in, our, in order for us to achieve together, we need to build in some accountability so that we know and we can show that our work is delivering meaningful and visible results. And so again, just a reminder of, of some thoughts we had around the vision. Um, and I'm excited. I, mean, I am anticipating, um, I'm anticipating work that we can see feel that will make a difference as we move forward. Any questions? I have a question, or more statements, I guess, than questions. Um, one, when you talked about uh, equipping our educators and measuring, and I really feel that, um, you know, we talk about the board and the superintendent driving, but I really feel like our educators and our students are wanting this, and uh, it's, a, it's a change that um, isn't uh, pushed down to them, but it's pulled. Um, and, and I'm happy to be a part of that and active in any role I can. I also see us as a board as advocates, not just um, the policy and, and that, uh, but, but just sharing why this work is important. Um, I appreciate you sharing uh, um, what, we're, what is already happening in our district and I hear from others in the community and outside of the community that they hear what we're doing and they feel the change and it brings them such a sense of pride. Um, and, and that brings me a sense of pride. So I know this is important work and, um, and I'm glad that we, we are focusing on it. And I as well am big into measures and I wrote down in my no, what, what's measured is important, and, or what's important should be measured. Um, yeah. And so 
um, I'm in agreement there. So thank you. You're welcome. I likewise um, want to thank Dr. Beasley for uh, presenting to us tonight. Um, it was a very informative um, update for us. I, I'm glad to get this uh, to, to learn more about the progress uh, that, that's been going on. Um, I, I really, what resonated with me was the need to have this ingrained in the culture of the district. Um, I think that has to come from the top and it has to come from the board. Um, I, I don't think um, the, the, the value um, will be communicated unless it comes from us. Um, so, you know, I, I'd like, I don't, I don't have any answers as I sit here tonight, but I hope uh, that we can explore how to embed uh, the, these, these uh, DEI initiatives into our own committee structure uh, within the, uh, uh, you know, whether that sits in uh, you know, our administrative policy committee or, or where, I, I, I don't know, but I, you know, Scott and, and Mike, I hope that, that, that the board can make this a, a priority to, to explore where it best sits uh, at the board level. Thank you. And uh, maybe if I can jump in and build on what John just said, I think in addition to that, it's also incumbent upon each of us to make sure that it's part of every single committee meeting that we have. Um, I was reflecting as, as Dr. Beasley was giving updates on how much progress we made and thinking to myself, how much, how many times have I asked questions along these lines in committee meetings? And I was excited to, to reflect that, you know, in CIA meeting last fall, Penny had brought to us some new books for textbooks, appro textbook approvals. And the first thing that she had highlighted was, you know, a DEI approach to the selection of text and, and seeing that as excitement. And now, you know, in, in FFO and, and even maybe more, more recently watching Mike and team respond to the COVID crisis and, and thinking through, you know, that process that the team went through where they automatically just included equity in everything that they did is a testament to, to how well the team's already doing it and the excitement and, and ownership that the community rallied behind when we when we were so quick to put in place a continuity of learning plan and meals and Wi-Fi and buses and one-to-one -one devices and every and, and hotspots for every single student proves how successful we can be as a district and 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 really a beacon for others um, at, at, as a leader as leaders in this space. So I'm really excited about this work and, and, and like Pam and John already alluded to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited as a board member to be part of this and, and, and continue to help drive. Dr. Beasley, I think we're, we're all very excited about this and uh, it, it's definitely something that we can uh, make a priority on this board uh, to build into uh, our committees and to examine our policies and procedures to incorporate DEI. Uh, you know, if you look at the districts around the state, we are uh, educational pioneers. Um, and building on this, I think, will keep us uh, on the razor's edge. Uh, and not because we, we need to do that, but that's, it's something that, that we want and it's what's best uh, for our kids, for the students, for the employees, for the administrators, uh, you know, you, you hit on so many points um, that when it comes together will we'll make us a phenomenal district. We'll go from great to, to phenomenal. Um, so we want to take a look at that and, and I think we can certainly look at our policies and procedures as a board and try and incorporate that because we want this culture. Uh, we want to ensure that uh, you know we're fostering agility amongst the kids, collaboration, courage, innovation, and, and overall happiness and well-being. Um, at the end of the day, every decision that this board makes, every decision that Mike makes, is all centered around the classroom and the well-being of our students. And so I think being able to work with you on this and kind of looking for your guidance, uh, we can achieve that.
Anybody else have any other comments for Dr. Beasley? Dr. Beasley, are you still with us? I'm sorry. I'm still here. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. We, we really appreciate it. Um, and we're looking forward to, to moving, moving forward with this. Uh, we appreciate all the time and effort and the success that we're going to have working together. Thank you Thanks, so Amy. much for your support your, and your endorsement means so much to me moving forward. I am really excited about the work we're going to do together. Well, thank you. Great. Have a good night. Okay. Uh, we are going to move on. We are at item 4.2. This is an action item. This is the Midland County Educational Services Agency 2020-21 uh, budget. And this is uh, Mr. Sher or, or is this Mr. Bruton? It's kind of both of us. And so this okay. is um, a yearly piece that um, most of you have gone through now and some of you multiple times. Um, somewhat of a um, not needed um, necessary for the ESA, but uh, it's a blessing for their budget. And so they, since their budget affects all the local districts, each local district by law takes action upon that. Um, over the last three or four years, um, we switched the format where they would kind of um, meet with you tonight to having them pre-meet with the business officials and superintendents to review their budget so we understand the detail of that and have that ahead. And um, therefore, um, we make the recommendation that you um, approve their budget. Their budget this year, um, because they're a few weeks ahead of our process, in adopting a budget and you know obviously how fluid our budget is that we would have a very difficult time even presenting um, a likely budget to you at this point in time we not even sure we'll have that a real good one for you on uh, June 20 or whatever it is that we are found so, um, it's going to be a difficult season and, and it's the same for them um, so a lot of unknowns and they start theirs a few weeks ahead so this budget doesn't have a lot of reductions in it at this point in time but they're well aware that they will have to continue to make uh, some reductions as they go forward so um, all in all um, I think they presented what we thought the budget was going to be um, prior to the the economic knowns of COVID, and so they'll have to make their adjustments accordingly. Anything you like you would like to add, Brian? No, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Um, I think what they presented was based on the best information that they could at that time, and you know the large variance between revenues and expenditures from year to year is simply based on the movement of uh, a large group of the um, Great Star Rate Engine Program um, and the Regional Preschool Pre Partnership. Out. And so, as will be the case with our budget, I'm sure that there's going to be several amendments, one earlier probably than later. And so, I would agree with Mike that what they presented is the most fair that they know. And I would anticipate, like other LEAs around the state, that there's going to be corresponding amendments throughout the year. So, we're looking for your um, action on that, Scott, for approval. So okay. Only I'll make a motion to approve item 4.2, the Millen County ESA uh, budget. I'll second that motion. Okay, motion was made by Phil. Uh, support was from Pam. Any discussion by any of the board members? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? None, the motion passes. Thank you very much. Next up, item 4.3, another action item. Uh, this is a revision to board uh, education policy 412.09 uh, regarding volunteers. Mike. Yeah, so we're going to make a little bit of a change on a policy on the run, so to speak. So this wasn't a change from NEOLA, but this was a change within our system that we felt we could make that would um, have some financial benefit for us heading into the uh, downturn that we're seeing. So if you recall, we purchased a system called Raptor a while back that um, did the office check-ins and background checks. And so we are, think we can reduce cost uh, at a, somewhere around $40,000 a year by using this Raptor system. And so the change you see in there is the language adding that Raptor could be used as well as what's called the iChat system. And so 
Um, we ran that through Truen to make sure. We were pretty sure we were fine with that, and, they, and we are. And so Truen's seen your language and your policy change. We sent it to the administrative services of Brad, John, and Phil. I got, do I have that? Or Brad, John, and Pam, I think. I correct myself on that and um, just ask them for their thumbs up that we bring it to you tonight. We didn't meet formally to go through that, um, but it is here for you tonight. Brad, do you want to add anything as the chair of that administrative services? No, I think that's fine. It's just a, just a change. Nothing new. I move to approve item 4.3, the revision of Board of Education Policy 4120.09. Support. Motion by Pam, support by Mary. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None, motion passes. Thank you very much. Next up, item 4.4, this is another action item. This is the HH Dow High Turf Project. Mike. Yeah, so we've, you know, um, obviously been a involved from afar for a couple of years while a citizens committee is tempted to raise money um, to turf the, an area over at Dow High for um, practices as well as competitions, youth leagues, band, music. Um, so they're, they're to that point where um, they have raised the funds. Um, we, if you recall, when we bid the community stadium project to be re-turfed, uh, we included the carpet portion of HH Dow um, to see if we had some buying power there. And we did not take action on that at the time, but we did get a price um, and waited for the funds to come in. So item 4.4 is the recommendation to field turf the same award winner from the Midland Community Stadium to uh, purchase the, the turf. And, and I'll go ahead, if you don't mind, Scott, talk a little bit about 4.5 since they go together. Um, so sure. before you can put the turf down, you have to prep a very wet area over there and have drainage systems and requirements put in over there. And so the second part of that was our recent bidding out of the site work for that. And that piece of it, um, we we're also asking for you to approve tonight to Three Rivers Corporation, a little better at 663,300. The entire project, a little over a million, a little less than 1.1. Um, and the committee um, has that, that secured those funds going forward, which will gift, um, will you receive those gifts? You'll receive two of them next month and the rest of them in the following months ahead. This project is slated to start somewhere around July and not be completed until November. Like most projects, there's a draw schedule where they draw as they go. And so we're, we'll be in good shape as we move forward with the total cost of that project. Okay. Um, thanks, Mike. We'll take an up uh, a motion, maybe a combined motion for 4.4 and 4.5 together. I move that items 4.4 and 4.5, the uh, HH Dow High School turf bid, turf bid and turf site work, both be approved. Thank you. Support. I'm sorry, was that Mary or Pam? I apologize. Me, Mary. Okay, Mary. Motion by John, uh, support by Mary. Any discussion? Just a hey, reminder, Scott. no no school district funds in this. All, yes. all funds that are donated to us from various sources as well as those raised by the citizens. Brad, you had a comment? Yep, I just want to let you know I'm, I'm all for the project. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not going to be participating in your vote tonight. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so, so any other discussion? I, just to make sure we do clarify, so Brad has that right to do so. If there's a conflict of interest only, you can't you can't abstain from that. So, Brad, I'm putting words in your mouth if you don't mind, and, and that's probably because Brad uh, his business is somewhere involved in that bid, in that process. So he, he has a conflict, and that's why he's able to not vote on it. That's correct. Okay, thank you, Brad. We appreciate it. Um, okay, I know this was a, a tremendous undertaking by the members of the community in, involved in this, and uh, it is an exciting project. So I'm glad it's it's starting to come to fruition, and um, we're looking forward to seeing where this goes. Uh, that said, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, motion carries for item 4.4 and 4.5. Thank you very much. That brings us to 4.6, another action item. This is Midland High parking lot. Mr. Bruton. Yep, and for a little bit better description, we called it the Midland High parking lot, but really it's kind of the baseball field slash community stadium parking area. If you know where family video is, it's the one that's right across the street, kind of kitty corner to where the concession stands are. And if you've ever been out by the stadium during that time of year, um, it really is right now a combination of grass, gravel, and probably right now a river of mud. And this is a area of enhancement that we've been looking for some time to um, provide some extra spaces during our high volume events. So we did have Bart and Mallow put this out to bid for us, and we are recommending tonight that the site work paving and striping be awarded to Pat's Great All of Midland, Michigan for $299,500 and the source of funds is our series two bond funds. Okay, uh, thank you, Brian. Great to see an in-town vendor on the list. Uh, we'll take a motion for item 4.6, please. I move that okay. item 4.6, uh, the MHS parking lot proposal be adopted. Support. Motion by John, support by Phil. Any discussion? Scott, I'm going to add a little bit to that. Um, so this is a project that was added to the bond work, was not on the original bond work, so this will be done with our savings that we've had at this point in time with the bond. Okay, great. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, next is item 4.7. Another action item. These are temperature sensors, Mr. Bruton. Correct. Um, in anticipation of our re-entry plan for next year, we're starting to procure some equipment to put ourselves in the best position to be able to bring our students and staff back as safe as we possibly can. And one of the items that we know is going to be a part of that plan is temperature sensors. And to try and do this in a way that is as efficient and safe as possible, we investigated tablets that have integrated temperature sensors into them. So it really does kind of look like an iPad, a 15 inch iPad that has thermal imaging on it that will give us um, some pretty accurate temperature sensors as students and staff are walking through the door. So we are recommending tonight to issue a purchase order to Tierney Brothers of St. Paul, Minnesota for 12 of these 15 inch temperature sensors along with pole stands for these so they can mount near the entrances of the schools. And the pricing for these is based on the statewide Remsey bid. And we are planning on using the Arthur C. Frock Endowment Fund to be able to fund this for a total of $32,016. I move to approve item 4.7 for the temperature sensors for $32,016. And, uh, $32, Support. Was that Phil? I'm sorry. Me. Oh, John. John, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, John. Okay, motion by Pam, support by John. Any discussion? Brian, did you already tell us how much, how many they were? <coughs> 12. 12. So our plan, Phil, is to have two in, at each secondary building and one at each elementary school. They're similar to those that you well, I don't know how many have been through an airport, but they are using them in airports for screening. If you pass within three feet of them in one second, we'll have your temperature. So if you've seen some of the schools or countries that are ahead of us on reentries in schools, they are taking temperatures with handheld temperature devices outside in line before they enter into school. And so we're trying to figure out how we're going to efficiently get 1,300 kids into Midland Eye. Well, in re reality, is it's probably not 1,300. We probably won't be bringing them all back at one time. But we'll talk about that a little more in my closing comments tonight. So so we're looking at, at <coughs> elementary schools, all the kids and teachers and everybody that's going to be in that building are coming in one entrance. Correct. At the and same time of the day. One or two. And, and we also have the handheld ones, Mary, that we procured as many as you can, the temporal ones that don't have to touch you um, right. as well. You know, ideally, we still have some months ahead. We'll, we could potentially continue to procure some of these devices, but there wasn't. This was timely because as Dave checked into them when I first saw them, um, they were already coming off the shelves and not going to be available in a short period of time. In fact, we, we may not be real confident in the delivery of these exact times, 
but um, we are trying to purchase as much of this stuff to get ahead. So a lot of unknowns on that, and so I don't think we should get too far ahead of ourselves, but we need to be thinking of some of that stuff as we go forward. Hand sanitizing stations, you know, temperature sen sensing stations, all those pieces that we can do that we're trying to get ahead of. But logistically, so I can kind of envision what these are going to look like, in order for these to do their job, you can't have 12 people coming in separate doors Correct. walking past these things because it, it has to be able to tell you it's Phil Roush that just set this thing off, right? Someone will stand there. It's it won't give you – just walk by. Yeah, it'll, it won't give you a name, John. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, okay. So, it, anyway, so we're going to have to control the flow of people sure. into the building and past the device. As far as we know, and so, you know, if you, so something I was going to mention later, we saw last Friday the governor announced she has a task force, and we're going to apply for some seats on that task force. Not sure we'll get it on, on the a plan of reentry for schools. Um, I also saw today, um, from the courtesy of the H.H. Dow Family Foundation, um, where they were asked for a potential um, to be involved in a purchasing of a platform of a system offering on reentry, some of the st plans that they've used in other locations. And fortunately for us, you know, some of the southern schools will be back to school first week in August, and we're going to learn some of these things. But yes, any way we look at it, until we know the exact plan, there is going to be a lot of inconveniences here, and there's going to be a lot of slow moving parts to this. And so, if we're bringing half loads and buses on different days or whatever, that's going to be look like. And so, what we've done behind the scene is we've tried to draw out. What the wildest scenarios we can think of, all the scenarios, and begin to prayer, prepare ourselves as best you can without going too crazy until we get a little guidance. And so um, some of that will come from the governor's go, but we're well in tune. I'm, you know, I'm a part of a regional uh, group throughout the country of superintendents that meet. Um, we've been meeting once a week since the COVID broke out. Um, 17 states represented us. So many of those states are ahead of us in their plan, and so we're learning some things that other places are doing as well. So, yeah, it could be a little little messy, John, tough logistics okay. possibly. Okay. I'm glad we're being proactive. I, I hope we can get them. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your uh, your forward thinking on this, Mike and Brian, and, and looking down the road to, to worst case scenarios because, you know, like you guys said, we have no idea what this is going to look like six months from now yeah. uh, when we're looking at a reentry. Um, and as far as sensors go, it sounds like these are the ones that are going to kind of minimize the bottleneck effect um, and, and try and get kids through as efficiently as possible without having to stop and physically, you know, take a temperature sensor to you know, one by one, uh, I think it'll just create a, a nightmare there. So allowing them to walk through slowly and, and identifying within a second or two, um, if there's a problem, this is going to be really helpful uh, yeah. and, and give a good sense of, of safety to the extent that it's able to, uh, to, to both parents, students and, and teachers and anybody else in the building. Yeah. Um, so if we get we a chance, we'll that. show you, um, we actually stole a little bit from Bard Mal, um, but a QR code system as well that we're, we're using with our, limited employees we have right now and we'll see how that goes as well as far as doing a self-assessment before you arrive and then the temperature sensing so yeah a lot of a lot of working pieces right now in this and by the way i'll mention that some of you who may not know him, i think a lot of you or students know him um but this is arthur frock it's it was money that was given in his name the former superintendent art still lives in the community i'm not sure if he's listening tonight or not so thank you Okay, we have a motion on the table for item 4.7. Uh, any further discussion? Hey, Brian, are these uh, going to be networked? To, are we going to get the feedback information to record that? I don't believe they're networked. I got Dave sitting over here. Um, a lot of unknowns about it, Brad, but I don't think they are. I think we literally will have to, you know, like if you're going through the airport, someone's standing there watching it. Bye. Yeah, they're manned. It's not recorded as of right now. But Dave, correct me if I'm wrong. No, Brian, I think you can hear me. Um, they can be networked, but our intention is not to network them because that may have HIPAA, uh, HIPAA. repercussions HIPAA. as well. Um, they do have the ability also to have a separate screen uh, plugged into it off to the side. So if we want to have an adult off to the side watching for the results so that we're not broadcasting results to everybody, we can do that as well. Thanks, Dave. That's great. Anything else, Brad? Or nope. anybody else? Okay. All in favor of approving item 4.7, say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, item 4.7 passes, thank you. Next up, we have our final action item, and this is the superintendent contract renewal. And I'm gonna handle this. Um, as many of you know, this is an action that uh, we have revisited annually since Mr. Sherrill began working for Midland Public Schools. Um, every year since he was hired, he's been given an overall rating of highly effective by this board. Last year was no exception. In December of 2019, Mr. Sherrill was again rated highly effective by the board. Uh, in my opinion, Mr. Sherrill has been nothing short of exceptional in, in the management of our district. Uh, he, in conjunction with the administrative team and teachers, have advanced Midland Public Schools by every measurable metric. Mike's leadership skills, hard work, tenacity, forward thinking, as we've seen tonight, and willingness to make difficult decisions have positioned our district to meet the coming financial challenges head on. Most importantly, every single decision Mike makes is centered around the classroom. The proposed changes of the contract will do the following. Add one year to the existing contract to maintain the five-year commitment. Doing so will extend this contract from 2024 to 2025. The proposed salary increase is in line with the other employee group salary increases for 2020 and 2021. The annual contribution by the district of 6% is going to be put into a tax deferred annuity. And finally, his professional dues and professional growth annual allowances are each going to be raised by $200. At this point, I'll accept the motion to approve the superintendent contract renewal item 4.8. So moved. Support. Support. Uh, that was motion by, jo motion by John and support by Phil. Did I hear that right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Any discussion from the board members? Uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, Mike at the helm, and uh, it's a uh, pleasure to uh, be able to add another year to his contract. So it's all good news. Thank you, Pam. Anybody else? Okay. All in favor of supporting item 4.8, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, item 4.8 passes. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Lord. Next, we move on to item five. Are there any requests to address the board? I don't know how this kind of works with Zoom. Okay, I guess yeah. we'll go with no requests. So, uh, okay. Hold on, we Scott. We do have a couple I'm visitors, sorry. and I'm not sure we're going to find out um, if Kim was just visiting for the ESA budget, or are you wanting to talk tonight, Kim? Thank you, Mike. No, I was just visiting with the ESA. As I thought you were, but I didn't yep. want to assume Thank too you. much, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the Thank only you, visitor Kim. we have on screen. There's one. I think we have one other one. Would you like to speak tonight? That that was it, Mike. Just Kim. Well, we have another visitor, but I don't. I'm not. I'm not hearing anything. So. Okay. Great. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Kim, and our other visitor for joining us. Uh, we're going to move on to item our number six here. We're looking at curriculum instruction and assessment. 6.1, we have uh, curriculum instruction assessment study committee minutes from April 20th and May 11, 2020. And that is uh, Lynn, I believe. Yep. You want me to go ahead and read them both now? Sure. All righty. On Monday, April 20th, 2020, we met. And uh, the... First topic was the continuity of learning plan. Melissa Toner, Jen Service, Allison Cicinelli, and Penny Miller Nelson shared a status update after week one of the continu continuity of learning plan. The feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. The CPL is a living document that will be revised as needed to meet the needs of students, families, and staff. Committee members discussed the challenges along the way and how those have become opportunities. The committee discussed the needs moving forward, including the need for a strategic restart plan for the 2021 school year. This plan must consider specific student needs and align supports to ensure equitable learning opportunities for all. Gratitude was expressed to the curriculum team, Dave Dietzik, and many others who lead the development of, led the development of the CLP. Uh, next, Amy Beasley talked about the diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
and uh, provided an update about our diversity, equity, and inclusion. Amy has been supporting MPS staff during the period of school building closure, most notably by assisting with plans to ensure students and families have needed resources. Amy has also been collaborating with MPS on the development of DEI-related training, development of an inclusive leadership model, and revision of the DEI strategy, which will be shared more publicly in the near future. And our next steps are, I will um, be reading at the May meeting, the committee will look forward to additional updates about the CLP and next steps for supporting students. And I will go to read the, there we go, May 11th CIA committee meeting report. Uh, we began with the cross indicator analysis report Kevin shared the MDE Special Education Cross Indicator Analysis Report, which provides a snapshot of how MPS performs on indicators reported in the annual performance report. Several of the indicators rely heavily on our collaboration with the Midland County ESA. Of the 11 indicators reviewed, only one indicator, secondary transition, requires action for targeted improvement. And we are already, and we already have a plan in place for improvement in this area. Overall, MPS performs well on the indicators. Next, we move to the continuity of learning plan. The committee members discuss the status of the continuity of learning plan. The grading practices document was recently revised to add details for increased clarity. The general feedback continues to be positive with most acknowledging that all are working hard to make the best of the challenging situation. And finally, Amy Beasley provided an update about the diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy. And the revised strategy includes critical actions in the areas of governance, leadership, con customers, community, and reputation, which uh, we heard those details tonight at our board of it uh, when Amy spoke at the meeting. And that will be it for our CIA meetings until fall. Have a great summer, everyone. All right. Uh, thank you for both of those, Lynn. You're uh, welcome. Next up, we have 6.2. This is an action item uh, textbook adoption. And I think it's Penny. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, last month, we brought to you two texts for your information and review, the 28-day public review period. And they're back to you for your approval, uh, hopefully, tonight. Um, the administration recommends the approval of these books. The first one is a book for seventh grade math, Big Ideas Math, Model Modeling Real Life. And uh, this is authored by Larson and Boswell. It is part of the middle school math series. The second book for your consideration is for our IB applications and interpretation class at our high school level. Uh, this is authored by uh, Wazer, Gary, Frederick, and Landman. And this was published in 2019, as was the previous book. Okay. All right. Make a motion. Go ahead, please. I'll make, make a motion to approve both textbooks in item 6.2. Support. Motion by Phil, support by Pam. Any discussion by the board? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. 6.2 passes. Next up, uh, item 6.3, another action item, staff development proposals. Yes. Penny, you're back. I am. Uh, as I presented these at the last meeting for your information, they're now back for your approval. There are 22 uh, proposals. And I just want to point out that these proposals do reflect the identified needs for curriculum and staff development moving into the next school year. Uh, these represent the request of funds from our general fund. We certainly have additional needs for professional learning, which include uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, upon approval of these projects, the district team will consult with those leading the projects to make decisions about implementation. As I shared with you at our last meeting, um, you are certainly approving these with the intent of each specific project, but we know that there still is a lot of unknown territory in front of us before we launch the school year. So um, we want to be very thoughtful about our capacity, um, our intention and the students in which we um, provide focus. 
So there is, um, we're asking you to approve these as they stand, but know that we may choose not to implement all of these based on budget and capacity to complete them. And they are all listed there in your agenda uh, as they were last time. Okay, thank you, Penny. I appreciate the work. Um, we'll I take move a motion for item 6.3. I move to approve item 6.3, the staff development proposal. Support. Motion by Pam, uh, support by Mary. Any discussion from the board? It's quite an extensive list. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be cool. <laughs> it would be interesting to see what all we can do, but um, they're all worthy. This, this, sure? is a, this is an excellent investment in our, in our staff. It, it's needed, it's uh, well-deserved, and, and it just keeps us uh, moving forward. Absolutely. Pam, I'm sorry, I think I spoke over you. No, I was just going to say I love the process, the, um, the committee process that we go through or you go through to create this list and vet this list and the work that goes into that. So I know there's been a lot of hours of work that uh, went into creating this and, and I sure hope we're able to uh, move forward with it, but I appreciate the flexibility that you have within the plan. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, item 6.3 passes. And that moves us to finance facilities and operations 7.1. These are gonna be study committee minutes from May 4th, 2020. Mary. Ah, yes. Um, bond update representatives from Bartlett Bar Barton Mallow updated the committee on summer work and the Dow High Turf. Bids for the turf project will be brought to the May board meeting of education for approval, which we did approve. Mr. Shar and Mr. Bruton discussed the following topics with the committee. March financials, revenues and expenditures remain aligned with the budget projection projections. The March year to year expenditure reductions is due to the additional payroll during the fiscal year of 2019. Purchase orders and card transactions above the threshold were reviewed. The ESA budget, the administration will recommend adoption of the resolution expressing support for the MCESA budget at the May Board of Education meeting, which we did approve. COVID-19 updates, potential budgetary impacts of COVID-19 closures were discussed with the committee and the next FFO meeting is Monday, June 1st at five o'clock. Thank you so much, Mary. Um, item 7.2, Brian, did you wanna take that or do you want me to just read it? Yes, sir, I'll take it for you real quick. Okay, thank you. Two gifts to acknowledge tonight, one from the Adams Elementary PTO for a water bottle filling station and another from the Midland High, for Midland High National Honor Society from the Community Gives Youth Service Program at the Midland Area Community Foundation, and we will acknowledge those once again at the end of the meeting in the credits. Okay, thank you. We uh, we certainly appreciate any gift in any form um, from whomever at this point would like to, to give them to us. Uh, these are both very generous, and, and so thank you for that. Uh, next up, human resources. We have item 8.1. Uh, I'm sorry, there's no minutes to read um, that, that I'm seeing. So, Mr. Jaster. Mr. Jaster is um, dealing with our flood conditions at his home right now, so I'm, I will ah, be filling cool. in for him. So, <clears throat> eight point one, okay. we have um, some. Thank you, Mike. Yep, we have some staff members um, doing their retirement, and so we are um, sad to lose them, but welcome them to the retirement world. Susan Schaefer from Seabird Elementary, Diane Sugnet from Midland High School, and Mark Zelinsky from Seabird Elementary will be retiring all at June twelfth. Okay, uh, thank you. Did you want to handle 8.2 as well? Yes. So this okay. is our yearly lease of Mark Hackbarth to the association to serve as their president. So it is a lease where they pay us for the 0.6 that he is leased to them. And we need, that's just for information. We do not necessarily need your action. Okay. And we'll leave it at that. All right. Thank you, Mike, for the update. We appreciate it. Uh, next is correspondence to and from the board. Uh, that information could be found under item 9.1. Uh, next will be scheduled, item 10 is uh, scheduled activities. This is information only. Uh, those are just our remaining uh, board 
scheduled board meetings, uh, whether or not they will take place in person uh, or continue via online meetings will remain to be seen. Um, but it is available there in the agenda uh, for review for anybody who wants to see it. Uh, finally, are there any points of clarification or anything that needs to be discussed further uh, by any of the board members tonight before I turn it over to Mike? Pam. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, this whole process has been hard and um, to have as much grace with each other as we can at these times and to for our community to keep things light uh, at some point during the weeks ahead. And um, I think as a board, it's our responsibility too to reach out to our legislators and let them know how this is impacting our district and our students and our community. Um, our district has done a lot on a dime uh, as far as what we've needed to do for the continuous learning plan and getting that in place uh, ahead of the rest. Um, we know that our tax revenues are going to be down and uh, we'll have huge financial impacts on our district in the next several years. And I think it's important for our legislators to know how that impacts us and, and then a call to action, what we would like to see. And I think um, flexibility with uh, any monies that come to the schools to be able to utilize um, where they best fit uh, would offer districts uh, the most flexibility in dealing with the issues that, that come to us. Uh, a huge thanks for the district and the, the number of uh, meals that have been served, the distance learning that has happened. And um, it's been a lot of work by a lot of great educators and, uh, and a lot of great students. So I appreciate all of the extra effort. Thank you, Pam, well said. Uh, any, anybody else? Just to, to touch briefly on the on the, the note of, of civility that you mentioned, Pam, but between the board members, um, you know, I know everybody's under a lot of stress with crazy work schedules and, and having kids at home all the time. And um, it, it really has been great working with all of you. Everybody has been readily available. Uh, I, I know it's a kind of a sometimes a tough time commitment with, with the committee meetings and now the board meetings and, and everything else. So I just I want you all to know to, that I really appreciate um, every one of you, uh, Brian, Mike, all the administrators, uh, and all the board members, you guys have been fantastic in a crazy world. Uh, and so it's, it's a comfort to know that we're all on the same team. Hey, Mike, I had a question for you. Sure. Do you have any knowledge of, um, I, I just saw as we were coming online for our meeting, I got a flash from national weather that we're going to get within a less than a foot and a half of the 86 flood as the prediction right now. Yep. Does that affect uh, Dow High School or any school, any building that we have that we had any type of damage in 86? Yeah, so we're, we've been out monitoring today and we do have a little bit of issue at Dow High already. Um, it is partly due to the construction. So if you recall, they start pulling those HVAC units out and um, you know, you, Brad, you probably know better than I, when they close up at night, it, they barricade it kind of, so to speak, right? And the water began to penetrate into the roof. So in Dow High is one, as Brad mentions, that um, we traditionally get water up into the parking lot. Um, generally not in the building there, Brad. Midland High, we, we and, I don't, and I'm not speaking 86, obviously it was there, if, it, if they did get it in or not, you may know better than me. Midland High, we've had a few issues in the basement as of late, but we did, if you recall, we did some tile work and some things down there, and it's been better. So we monitor both Midland High and Dow High on those. Um, with East Lawn gone, that was one of our other buildings that we usually traditionally have water issues. So we are out monitoring. Mike Mogenberg's monitoring them each night and each morning, and he was in them t today. So... Yeah, this is a concern. It's going to be bad out there um, if you haven't been out there already tonight. And some areas have lost power since we've gone on, on tonight, too. So 
um, we'll monitor that throughout the evening. Some of the controls that we've added helps Mike monitor a lot of that. So keep that in mind. Some of it's HVAC, but some of it's also his ability to monitor all the other things that are going on in the buildings. But yeah, it's a concern, Brad, a little bit coming up behind Dow High. I haven't been over to Dow High yet myself in that area, so I don't know if it made its way up Maine or not. Does that also affect our food service delivery patterns? Yeah, if it's high enough. So we were delivered today. And the next day we'll deliver on Wednesday, so maybe the roads at least were received before them. So um, it is supposed to slow into tomorrow morning, right? And so we'll see what the roads do from there. But it could. It very well could, yes. They say the crest is early Wednesday morning. Okay. Then, yeah, that could be an issue then over in that area. For sure. We'll, yep. we'll have to adapt quickly if it is because Dow High is a service area, and so is um, over on that end. Um, when we move from the baseball field, I'm not sure where we deliver over by the park um, north of Dow High there. So we'll have to monitor those areas as well. Good okay. questions, Brad. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mike, I think the floor is yours. Okay. I don't know how to really sum up everything that I've been writing to you guys because it's a little bit uh, um, fluid, right? And so we've been planning and looking at three things. Um, and how do we end the school year with the continuity of learning plan? How do we benchmark students where they are at? How do we meet their needs um, possibly with some summer learning? How do we enrich some of the kids who would like to be advanced? And how do we prepare for fall? With all that said, um, as you know, on Friday we released a little bit of a plan where we know that we, um, some parents and kids are probably celebrating it, that they're going to be done it a few days early. Um, and we need to um, refocus how we're going to deliver instruction going forward. It's obvious that a blended model is definitely on the table, uh, meaning even if we do get back to face-to-face, -to -face, it's probably not the face-to-face -face that we know. Um, we also know that we will have students who are um, vulnerable health conditions who will need to continue to learn in a distant, uh, distance manner. We also know we will have parents who are looking for a different option, even if it's just for a short term versus bringing those kids back. And we believe in choice, and we believe in providing all those services. And so in order to do that, um, we needed some more PD. We needed a learning model, a uh, learning management system, and we had that on for the agenda tonight, but we wanted to uh, make sure we chose the right vendor and uh, communicate that appropriately. And so in order to do that, uh, Penny and her team devised a plan, closing out the school year, benchmarking students, training teachers, um, getting those grades in, and then offering, um, I guess you would call tutor tutorials for the summer as well as enrichment for the summers. And so all that details are being worked out very quickly as we do everything lately, it appears. Um, and we will release those summer details. And then as we know as the fall gets closer and we learn what, what we probably are expected, we will begin, we'll be in good position with that PD, the training the learning management system to deliver instruction in different models going forward. So a lot going on in that area as well. Um, touch base a little bit on, on the budget. I wrote you a little bit about the CREC uh, meeting last week. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe I haven't gone through this a few times. I, I, I monitor everything and I watch everything, but I've learned too many times don't prepare too far out ahead because you'll be wrong and everything will change. So I know you're all anxious, and I'll caution you all to say um, move slowly. So we, we do it deliberately. We do it right. And luckily for us, we've managed ourselves very well. And so we should have a little less panic than most districts in this state. And so um, it, it's a pretty devastating picture, for sure, um, going out there. Uh, we've already been, so you know, behind the scene, we've identified um, several cuts that we'll make in the next week or two. Um, we believe we can easily find 500000 Before we're done, we will we'll probably reduce a million. Plus, if you recall, we've been putting... And I, you know, I will use just broad numbers tonight, a million, million and a half away into a couple of our capital improvement funds, printer, copier funds. And so we easily could find two, two and a half million. Now, I don't know that I've ever seen where we'd have to find more than that, but we will have to find more than that this year. So I really believe we need to consider 
Um, that fund balance was built for a reason. That was to continue to provide quality service to students as we go. We cannot sacrifice these students um, going forward, but it's a balance. We, you don't spend it all irresponsibly. You balance it out to get through, weather through this, and that's what, that'll be what is upon all of us to do throughout the budget. So um, I do not think there's going to be a true proratia. Some people would bet against me right now on that. They are definitely short in this budget year, and I have seen two of those in my career where they cut you, but traditionally earlier than this year. We only have two payrolls left. So this budget could be cut um, coming into the year, but what I hear, what I feel, is there's not a lot of will to do that because they are in election year luckily for us and so they probably don't want to be the real bad guys that said pay all your employees and now we're going to cut you with two weeks to go and so i think they'll have to bag borrow leverage a lot of situations but they probably won't give us much of a cut if if at all in this current budget year before june 30. now next year i do think we'll see a very large cut i've heard anywhere prepare for 500 800 and a thousand and i'm betting on the 800 and so $800 cut is the largest in the history of public schools in the state of Michigan, and so it's pretty large. Um, but again, I think we can manage it. None of us want to go through it. It will be painful. We'll be talking about people. We'll be talking about jobs. We'll be talking about reducing um, in some areas. So it's never fun to do this. I, I, I've had to do it in my career, and I can tell you that there's a lot of gray hair in my head, and there's not much left of it because of it. The hardest thing I've ever had to do is tell <clears throat> people, employees what, what way it occurred to them. And so I caution us in not running around scared, not getting people's anxiety up until we know what we have to do. And when we do, we do it with all the kindness and humanity that we can as we go forward. Um, but I think we're in good shape. You know, we built that fund balance for that reason. And so... As Brian tries to figure out, him and Lori tries to figure out what he'll present to you twice in June, I will tell you, if you recall, <clears throat> one year, we what we presented to you in the first budget in June 10 and what we presented you in June 20 were two different budgets, and I think you're probably going to be in the same situation. We'll present to you a very broad one still, and it'll change by time we adopt it, and it'll have to be changed many times going forward from July 1, probably after we know. Um, their goal is still to let us know kind of by July 1 when we're going to get. I don't believe that's going to happen. And so I, you know, they have to notify us by October 1, and so I think that's probably a more reality is in the fall they'll be able to work through this and know what we're going to do. We got to protect our student enrollment, and that hence us into providing the services that all these children and parents may need going forward. Um, you know, we can talk about what school is going to look like in the fall. It's a little early um, to get too far ahead of yourself there, but if you've watched, and some of the countries are have opened up schools and have opened up schools, and, and if you look at it, it is face mask on all students. It is um, half classrooms. Um, it is temperature sensing, sensing and screenings. And so I think there's some reality that we're probably going to be doing, you know, half, half a day for each kid group uh, with blend it or every other day capacity. Some are using Saturdays in that model. Um, it's going to be unique as we get closer to go forward. So we'll have models to follow. Hopefully something comes out of the governor's. We hope she gives us, to be honest, very, broad, very strict requirements, unlike what she kind of did um, twice now to us. In my mind, she, she kind of put us in a tough situation in two of us. Pay all your employees. You will pay all your employees going forward. And, and that was a tough one to be thrown under. And the second one was um, you will hold harmless all kids. And, and the, the grades really don't matter that much. Tough one with kids and parents as you're moving through on that one as well. And so on this one, I really hope the committee comes out and say these are the things you're going to do. I've heard a rubric is what will probably will come out of this committee, and you'll follow the rubric. So, And we're learning from industry, right? I've, I've copied several things already from industry and what they're doing, the auto companies opening, all those pieces going forward. So there's a lot of mo movement going. Guys, you know, we like to set goals for ourselves, and I think we got two major goals set for ourselves. How do we deliver instruction in the new world, and how do we manage this budget? And so it's probably been hijacked, um, some of those, and... Um, we're in, good, we're in good, good position as can be. You know, I used to use the motto when things were bad in my previous district that um, my goal was to be the last one in the food line, the last one to go broke, and I think we can manage that again and, and be one of those last one districts to have that issue if, if things get that bad. So.
not the best note to leave it on, but I'll leave it on the good note. So we uh, we have um, stepped in, up into our community with the food service. Thank you to the USDA for doing that. Um, right now we are around 250,000 meals, and we still have um, five, six weeks delivering. We, we June 30th is when we've been told we'll be done. Um, delivering to all. And so after June 30, it would be a typical summer learning pro uh, feeding program from there. So if you add those numbers up, I don't know, we're probably around 350,000 meals into the community. So that, that should assist a lot of the need out there going forward. So a lot of effort by everybody. We'll continue to learn. Um, I, th I think a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress out there. Um, I kind of always tease myself and think I'm kind of tough and above it, but I've felt a lot of anxiety myself. Um, not only worrying about my grandkids and kids like all of us do, but also worrying, you know, just about the situation we're in. And none of us thought three months ago we'd be in this situation. So I think it's how quick our world has shifted that it's difficult for all of us. And so I think um, some of the board members said tonight, let's, let's work together and be civil because this is a great community and this community can figure out how to get through this. I know we can. That's all I have, Scott. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Last is a, a motion to adjourn. I move Anybody wants to make it? Adjourn. Motion by Mary. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we stand adjourned. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.